But my first ever time in Paris, best thing I saw, not the Eiffel Tower, not the Arc de Triomphe, not the Champs Elsie. <laughs> best thing I saw, in my hotel room, on the telly, on the telly comes Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, in French. <laughs> How good is that? L'Empire contre la <laughs> It's just awesome. It's like, there's all your favourite characters, but they're all talking the language of love. <laughs> and it just put this whole new spin on everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, C3PO and R2D are having a fight like they do, but because they're talking the language of romance, it's like they're having this lover's tiff. Like C3PO is just there going, How good they do? Guess what you're shushing, idiot, and they are <laughs> and little Yoda was there because he was talking French. It was, it was like he was this sleazy little munchkin firmly on the ball, just hobbling around. Just going, it's not quite okay. mm, Yes. <laughs> what do you wish you could tell your 20 year old self? The, the one big thing that I wish I could tell myself, and, and it's to do with love as much as it is to do with anything in life, that's thank the wankers. <laughs> and it's like, thank, thank the cheating mongrel who, who you caught having dinner with your sister. You know, like, thank, thank the cheating, uh, the cheating uh, bastard who, who caused you to be up late at night drinking gin, singing I Will Survive till 3am sort of thing. You know? be, because, like, they're the ones who teach you when you've found Mr Right or Mrs Right. You know, that, and it's the times in your life when you make the horrendous, often hilarious mistakes mistakes in hindsight that really teach you when you've found the right thing for you. Mm. But the point is that it's just inevitable. You can't get away from it. So there's no point whinging about the unfairness of it. You know, when I was young again, I'd always be whinging about, oh, God, I've just got everything set up now. It's all changed again. It's not fair. Why does life never work out just as I plan it? Not fair. Of course it's not fair. Life isn't fair. The world isn't fair. <laughs> like if the universe was a fair place, the only time they'd ever let Britney Spears anywhere near a microphone would be to say, Price check, check out three, lamb mince, one kilo. Price check, check out three. I don't know, when I read this article, I just thought, anybody else just wants scientists to shut up? And it's like, you know, every three weeks they take something away that we really love. Like, three weeks ago, uh, beer was linked to Alzheimer's. This week it's Black Forest Cake is addictive. Like, next week it's going to be, oh, press release, scientists have discovered looking onto a headland at a coastal view can cause cancer. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> the irony is, the horrible irony is like, it's actually Diabetes Awareness Week this week. There's like a million Aussies with diabetes going to open their papers this morning and just go, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Trust your instincts. Julia Morris uh, said it beautifully in my book on love. She said, when you, when you know, you know. And if you don't know, the answer is no. So go for a walk. For me, it's the beach. Go for a walk somewhere, get a bit of peace and just ask your gut when you're faced with one of those difficult decisions, like whether to go for a new role at work here or, or whatever it could be, ask your gut nine times out of 10, it'll give you the right answer. Mate of mine, Sean Richards had a thing where he didn't trust his gut. He, uh, Sean Richards, one of those families where everything they do is totally locked in tradition. You know, like they've, they do it that way because they've done it that way for five generations. That's a, anyone, families like that? Sean Richards' family, uh, they've had the traditional Richards family Sunday lamb roast every, every Sunday, four o'clock every Sunday for about you know, 30 years. They have like the big afternoon and it ends up being a big family occasion. If you're invited, you've got to get there bang on at two o'clock to help them make the traditional Richards family Sunday lamb roast marinade, which, <laughs> like, which everyone does together. And Anyway, Sean Richards married a, guy called, a girl called Sophie. In Sophie's family, they had a tradition where the firstborn male child in every generation was called Richard. Now. Sean Richards didn't want to call his son Richard. <laughs> but he was so intent, his gut was screaming at him, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But he's so intent on getting the lamb roast up that he gave in and little Richie Richards was born, Richie, Richie Richards. And it's quite a cool name when you're in primary school, you know, little Richie, Richie Richards running around. First day of big school, he came home in floods of tears, absolute floods of tears. Oh, I'm not going back to big school, mum and dad. They're like, God, oh, what is it, mate? What is it? What's happened? What's going on? They're like, oh, I can't go back to big school. They're like, what is it? Is it the homework? Is it too, it's so much work? Like, oh, I can't go back. Like, what is it? Tell us what you... They call me Double Dicker. <laughs> The best-selling author is with me in the studio. Marty, good morning. Good morning, mate. Uh, the book uh, follows the story of Handyman Day. If he does some work for a young entrepreneur and innocently thinks uh, she shares his passion for sport, DIY and gardening. Now, 
Can you give us a bit of a reading, a bit of a yeah, taste of Sure. Of I, I guess is. the setup is that, you know, Christina like, is desperately trying to uh, talk him into bed, throwing out hints. Right. Some of them a bit subtle, some of them not quite so subtle. Uh, and he, he, being a typical Aussie bloke, is an idiot and just will right. not ever get any hints. So here's Dave. So, so you're sort of squaring <laughs> the gender ledger. Squaring the ledger for the fellas, right, yes. Right, OK. So, more pain, Dave. Hurt me. Hurt me bad, implored Christina. <laughs> Dave didn't say a word. He let out a huge sigh then put on the DVD highlights of the 2005 Ashes series. <laughs> <laughs> I love it now. When I was a pharmacist, this guy, this guy was prescribed some asthma spray because he was allergic to his cats. He came back a week later, said, nothing, doesn't do anything, useless. Found out he'd been spraying it on his cats. <laughs> <laughs> Another time, this lady was prescribed Eastridge and Patrid, patches, you know, put one on every, every other day. About two months later, she came back for the repeat. She says, I've run out of room. I said, what do you mean? She pulled it like, like this. <laughs> about 40 patches on her back. <laughs> There's bigger idiots than you out there, trust me. <laughs> we all have these massive defences that we put up when someone tries to tell us how to live our life. You know, like we, you know, we're quite open to being coached on tennis or, you know, coached on um, work-related things. But when someone says, you know, this is how you should live your life, it was, no, wait no, a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think the, um, that we had this fantastic quote on my blog the other day that really explains for me uh, why the really dorky photos work. Um, this young girl, what she, I'll, I'll say it right, she said, um, when someone with grey hair offers me advice, I dismiss it out of hand. But when I can see a photo of them at the same age and they look, <laughs> they were just as big a goober as I am. <laughs> then they're just someone who's lived a bit more and learned a bit more than me. And so, I, so I can take advice from them. We love that. Marty Wilson, can you stick with us? Yeah, sure. We want to talk to you a little bit more. Um, and good news, everyone in the Circle audience today will get a copy of the book. <laughs> but he has discovered this one technique and you guys can try it at home. I'm telling you about it because it's funny. If you're, going, if you're you know, about to go on the road, raise your hand, you can go nuts, abuse whoever you want, but you have to do it using old Broadway show tunes. <laughs> and it works a treat, because there's only so aggro you can get when you're in the car by yourself. Then, there's no dickhead like you, dickhead like no dickhead like no. <laughs> and he demonstrated it for me, like we were driving along, driving along, and this bloke in a Range Rover cut us up. You know those like typical inner city rich who buys the Range Rover so they can successfully navigate those treacherous leafy avenues of Mossman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing there's a few here today. Oh bother it. Love it. Simply murderous pothole in low pumping on mules. <laughs> anyway, I thought this mate of mine was gonna go nuts, but he's just calm. Got out of the car, looked across at me and just said, West Side Story. He's gone up the black brains I swear, middle of Moscow, middle of the day like this, he's gone. <laughs> you make me sick in your four-wheel drive, dressed like a dick in your four-wheel drive, country road shirt in your four-wheel drive, but don't get no dirt on your four-wheel drive. Two weeks later, driving a little boring man's Camry that I've got over here, and uh, it's going so hard, just jams the brakes on the front of me, almost run up his butt. My mate thinks I'm going to go crazy. I've been rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> I just calmly get out of the car, look across at him, and just say, Sound of music. <laughs> and I start walking up the guy in the car, going, Bastards in Bentleys and Trettons in Calais. <laughs> Ducking and weaving and barging in my way Driving like dickheads and cutting in front Just like old Saab drivers, you are a huge Tommy <laughs> <laughs>